Hi there, I'm Karen Bailey, pianist, teacher, composer, and today I'm going to demonstrate Triplet Cascades, which is from Jazz and Around Volume 6 for solo piano. Now, as its name implies, um, we've got lots of triplets. In actual fact, I've notated it in 12 8, so it's compound time. Um, but if it was 4 4, the groups of three would be triplets, of course. Now, I'll demonstrate the introduction first. Um, this needs careful counting because it sets up the, uh, the feel for the rest of the piece. I'll just play it. Okay, so that needs careful 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 1 and a, 2 and a. And similarly with the right hand, 1 and a, 2 and a, 3 and a. It's coming in on the third or the a. Okay, so when you put that together, it's quite a groovy, groovy mix. Now the theme of this, if you know your F major arpeggio, and add a sixth to that, which is the D, you have the theme. So, okay, and that repeats many times throughout the piece. So once you've learned that, you've got it for the rest of the piece. The left hand from the opening of the theme at bar five, nice D minor suspended chord there. And that's a G 13th. Very nice voicing for a 13th. And that particular voicing pops up later on. It's also in the, in the introduction, okay? So it's a good one to know, that voicing. That crops up again at the end, which I'll explain. At bar 15 to 16, there's a tricky little bit. It's that arpeggio. And when we get to the top of that arpeggio, there's a little addition to the phrase there. So across the bar line from 15 to 16, sidestep to five there, it makes it easy to play that little phrase. And that's diminuendo, by the way. So we get... Okay, so the right, right hand doubles the left in rhythm there. The bridge is um, at bar 21. Now the left hand here, um, I can give you some tips to make this a little bit easier. The tenth, small hands can manage that. Pivot on the second. Let your hand relax and your fingers will automatically land over the next, the notes for the next chord. So that's a G minor to a C sus. Then there's an A minor, similarly to a D7. Let the hand relax, and there's the D seventh. That repeats. Then there's a tricky little arpeggio. That'll need a little bit of extra practice. Thirds are easy. But then there's a second followed by a fourth. If you think those intervals, it will make it easier. Now the right hand there is a bit tricky as well. I'll just demonstrate that. One, two, three, four. So if you count that, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. The articulation is very important there. If you pedal it as I've marked it, you get the effect of the staccato. Okay, left hand in the next passage from bar 25. These are the chords. You can see these on the overhead shot. Okay, tight chord voicings there. The outer interval of a, is a seventh. If you think that way, it helps. So, shift the second to the D. Five, three, one. 
keep the three for the next one. That's a spicy chord. It's an augmented ninth. And then a little bit more straightforward there. And then there's a repeat of the A theme. Now, I did say at the start that I'm going to demonstrate the ending. You get the vamp again. And at the end of that, this little arpeggio run is that the notes of the chord I pointed out at the beginning. If you think that way, it's the same position all the way up. Left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand. So it sounds... And that's ad lib, so you can play it at a leisurely tempo if you want to, or you can rip it off quite fast. Okay, so here's a performance that I've recorded before for this one. <laughs> 